warning the insidious way narcissistic abuse may cost you millions that's what we're talking about in this video <music> Dr. Melissa, I'm a trauma expert, top doctor, leadership catalyst for narcissistic abuse survivors, and CEO of Sustainably You, where we help soul-driven leaders like you transcend your past experience of abuse to create greater impact and fulfillment while you change the world. Today, we're talking about the insidious way narcissistic abuse may cost you millions because by the time you notice it, it may be too late. Now, I'll be really honest with you. I didn't think recovering from narcissistic abuse should cost me anything. It had cost me a whole lot during the course of the relationship. Costing me any more just didn't seem right. And eventually I accepted, but I didn't really like, the cost of the legal fees, the division of assets, the therapy. But what I didn't realize then was that those costs were just the tip of the iceberg. After I had left the relationship and completed therapy, I thought I was done. I thought I was healed. I thought I was good to go. I wasn't interested in dating. Life was full enough as a single mother of five, a doctor, a medical director, and my life was better, so much better. I no longer felt like I was operating at my maximal stress level, like one more thing would make my head literally blow right off. But I didn't feel whole. I didn't feel at peace. My mind was never quiet and it didn't have nice things to say at all. Constantly asking me things like, how could you allow this to happen? How did you not see it sooner? Why did you put up with this for so long? My thoughts were hijacking my peace. And I didn't realize it until years later, but my thoughts were hijacking my leadership of myself, my family, my career. And now through my work with thousands of narcissistic abuse survivors, I see a common thread, rumination. So what do entrepreneurs, leaders, and past narcissistic abuse survivors have in common? This sounds like the start of a joke, right? But no, they're all prone to ruminate. And rumination is defined by the big psychiatry organization as repetitive thinking or dwelling on negative feelings and distress and their causes or consequences. That might sound like mumbo jumbo, so let me break it down this way. Ruminating thoughts are problem focused, not solution focused. They're often unwanted, intrusive, disruptive, and maybe worst of all, ruminating thoughts keep you stuck in this continuous loop of emotional distress. And while rumination impacts 100% of the population occasionally, it negatively impacts narcissistic abuse survivors to a very large degree, with many reporting spending several hours per day ruminating. Rumination is also common in people with anxiety, depression, OCD, eating disorders, and it's common in certain careers like entrepreneurship and leadership. In the entrepreneur studies, rumination decreases subjective well-being and depletes resources by preventing the entrepreneur from being able to detach from work and truly recover. It also has been shown to make them more exhausted when they're starting out their day the next morning. And if you want links to all of these studies, we'll put the, the link to the article I've written on this in the description. Now, what about those narcissistic abuse survivors who are also entrepreneurs and leaders? This is who I work with. And the results or the, the impact, the effect is extreme. So let's talk for a moment about what rumination looks like. Because when I was ruminating, I had no idea that's what it was. How often have you wondered, how did this happen? What did I do to deserve this? How could I be so stupid? What's the matter with me? How did I not see this sooner? Will I ever be able to trust again? What have I done to my future? Will I ever feel like myself again? Your mind fools you into believing that these are valid questions, questions that need to be answered in order to move forward. 
but really your mind is doing the narcissist dirty work for them. And each moment spent ruminating moves you further from your goals and costs you a small or in some cases a large fortune. So let's talk about some of the visible and hidden costs of rumination. The first is time, right? How much time is lost to rumination? Time that could otherwise be spent with loved ones, generating income, enjoying a hobby, in travel. How much time is lost? The second is focus. How much does rumination, those ruminating thoughts, steal your focus from what you're doing, making you less effective, less efficient, less focused on the people and the things that matter. The third is your presence. You know, we only get one shot at each present moment and we can choose to be present or we can choose to blindly move through our day with our head full of ruminating thoughts and questions, missing our kids' soccer goals, missing the important detail in a presentation, missing your exit on the freeway. The fourth is peace of mind. Rumination feels like it's required to bring you protection, safety, security, planning, so things like this don't happen again, but really it's robbing you of your peace. The fifth is sleep. The studies have shown that rumination is most common in the evening. It frequently interrupts sleep. It interrupts your ability to fall asleep, inter interrupts your ability to stay asleep, and this all negatively impacts your energy level, your productivity the next day. Number six is weight. Now, this one is really, really obscene. There's a 2015 Ohio State study that showed that for every stressor, like one stressor in the last 24 hours makes you burn 104 less calories. So if you've noticed weight gain without emotionally eating, without changing your diet, you want to look at stress as a cause. And rumination is a huge cause of stress. It is designed to keep you in a place of stress and distress. The next is physical health, number seven. As I just said, rumination is designed to keep you in a place of stress and stress impacts all kinds of things. Sleep, immune function, blood sugar, inflammation, cortisol levels. Number eight is mental health. Rumination has been proven again and again to contribute to developing anxiety or depression or to worsen it if you already have it. Who wants that? Number nine is damaged friendships. Now, this one I didn't see coming. I, I was floored and shocked, but people tend to bond over ruminating together, what they call co-ruminating, sort of updating someone on the continuing saga of, of whatever your story is getting both people involved in the in the rumination over the questions like, how did this happen? What did I do to deserve this? Staying stuck in that place. And what happens is the other person may not consciously be aware, but these conversations are wearing them down. They walk away feeling lower energy and worse mood and they start distancing themselves from you because in the beginning, while they might have enjoyed the conversation about the drama, the impact on them is so great that their subconscious mind is just going to pull back and you end up feeling more isolated at a time when you need people the most. And number 10 is missed opportunities. And if you are uh, an entrepreneur, a business owner, a high level professional, you are a leader, you know the cost of missed opportunities can be extreme. Rumination prevents you from seizing the day, from seizing those opportunities. Number 11 is that rumination keeps you stuck in the role of the victim in the Cartman drama triangle. And when you are in the role of victim, everyone else you interact with is either going to be a rescuer or a persecutor. This is a really dangerous and costly place to be. And if you haven't heard of the drama triangle, you're going to want to check out my videos on the drama triangle and how to escape it. Number 12 is money. Because the reality is even if you only ruminate for a few hours per day, rumination is your most costly habit. Let's think about that. 
financial cost of rumination for a minute. For most people, rumination has become so commonplace that you don't even realize that it's embezzling your present and your future resources. So let's start by considering the impact on your time, the financial impact on your time. What's an hour of your time worth? Maybe that's what you make as an hourly rate. Maybe that's what you bill out at uh, as an hourly rate. Or maybe you don't trade time for dollars and an hour of your time has different value. Thinking in terms of, you know, how do you decide what to outsource versus do yourself? How much is it worth to you to buy back an hour of your time by having someone else do something? Like everyone has the ability to figure out some idea of what an hour of their time is worth. Time being one of our most precious resources. We can't ever get it back. So take the value of an hour of your time. Spend some time identifying how many hours a day you spend ruminating. And then do some quick math. If you value your time at $200 an hour, you ruminate four hours a day. That's almost $300,000 a year, just for the time alone. If you value your time at $500 an hour and you ruminate four hours a day, that's almost three quarters of a million dollars. If you value your time at $1,000 an hour and you ruminate four hours a day, that's almost one and a half million dollars in just one year. Now consider how your lack of focus, your lack of presence, impact your ability to land new clients, prevent you from delivering at your highest level, which impacts customer and client retention. Now add in the cost of poor sleep, physical, mental health challenges, weight gain that impact your productivity, your performance. And be sure to add in those tangible costs, things like medication, therapy appointments, weight loss treatments. And finally, consider the financial impact of missed opportunities, the lack of revenue and growth that would have occurred if only you'd written that book, done that TEDx talk, added a new service or product line, started your business sooner, expanded your network, committed to and implemented a new strategy, hired a business consultant or a strategist. It does not take being a math major to realize ruminating has cost you and is costing you a fortune. For most people, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the year. I can tell you for sure that this blind spot has cost me millions over the course of my lifetime. And fortunately, I learned how to eliminate it. Now I teach others how to do that too. Awareness is the first step. Awareness of your ruminating thoughts. Awareness that you're going down that rabbit hole is the first step. I can guide you through the rest. How much will it cost to wait one more day? If you're ready to start now, comment, I'm ready, and I'll see you in the next video.